And he came up with three laws. Uh, one was that planets were not going around in circles with little epicycles, but instead were going around um, the sun in an elliptical orbit with the sun at one foci. Secondly, the, uh, the planets were speeding up and slowing down in such a way that the amount of area swept out in a given time period would be equal. And finally, that there was a ratio between the cube, the distance of the planet from the sun, and uh, the square of the amount of time for the orbital period. Here's a little view of the uh, planet at different times, equal times around. When it gets close to the sun, it's sort of a bigger sort of triangular wedge, and further away it's a smaller one, but those areas remain equal, and it governs how the planet kind of speeds up and slows down as it goes around the sun. That area law, in a moment I'll show you how that can be very easily proved, and Newton is the one who proved it. Kepler did try to look for not just geometrical explanations, but causes of why things do what they do, and he, he didn't make that much progress on that. Here's one of his sort of failed ideas. It's a failed idea, but it's, uh, it's got a lot of cool math in it. He had a thought that he noticed that the planets their, the distances from the sun could be modeled by inscribing, um, taking a sphere for, for Mercury, and that was Mercury's orbit around, uh, around the sun, and putting an octahedron around that, and then putting a sphere around the octahedron, and an icosahedron around the octahedron, and, and he took the five solids, five platonic solids, and showed that, that that might be why the planets are the distance they are from the sun. Let me show you how this looks in 3D. Uh, at that time, they only knew about six planets, so this was really convenient. Five platonic solids gave us six spheres, which six planets. So it was a collection of inscribed and circumscribed spheres. Let's take a look. Here's Mercury's, uh, Mercury's orbit, and circumscribed around uh, Mercury's orbit is an octahedron rotating there. This was made with Cabri 3D. Put a sphere around the octahedron and when we calculate the ratios of those two spheres we get 1.73 which is pretty close of the uh, ratios of the size of the orbits of Venus to Mercury. Around Mercury's sphere, around Venus's sphere we put an icosahedron and around that icosahedron we put another sphere and it turns out the ratio of the radii of those spheres is 1.26, which is fairly close. Around Earth's sphere, we put a dodecahedron, and we put a sphere around that, and that tells us the ratios of those is fairly close to the ratio of Mars to Earth's. Uh, now, if we shrink this all, which we need to, for Jupiter, we have to stick a tetrahedron around there and put a sphere around that tetrahedron. And we get the ratio of the orbits of uh, Jupiter uh, to Mars. And finally, shrink that whole thing down, stick a cube around that sphere, and a sphere around that cube, and that tells us approximately the ratio of Saturn to Jupiter. Now it turns out that uh, these are interesting problems, finding out the um, radii of the circumscribed and, uh, and inscribed spheres. Uh, the cube was the only one I found to be easy, and the other ones were pretty tricky. I looked up the formulas for, for those in order to create that animation. But it's a good example of how things could be wrong but still be mathematically interesting. Newton has a nice explanation for why... Um, hmm, should be a video there. Uh, for why things sweep out equal areas in equal time. Let's see. Hmm... We on this? No. Okay. I'll explain it like here. So what Newton said is that a planet, uh, a planet wants to go in a straight line. In this case, uh, the planet kind of wants to go from B to C, C to B. And let's say the planet does go from C to B. And if there were no sun pulling that planet in, the planet would then go from capital B to lowercase c. But there is a sun. So imagine the sun were to not be constantly pulling the planet in, but to do it in, like, pulses. So the sun is kind of being ignored by the planet from C to B, but then the sun makes a pulse, which tries to pull the planet into it, 
and the size of that force is, is from B to D. Well, we teach this in our class, if the planet wants to go from B to lowercase c, and the sun's trying to pull it in a force from B to D, it instead goes in this parallelogram from this B to this capital C, which I should probably call something else, so it makes this uh, parallelogram. Well, the triangle that it makes is triangle SBC. It would have gone to triangle SB lowercase c, but it does triangle SB capital C. Well, let's see why these areas, all three of these triangles, have the same area. The first two triangles have the same area because they have the same, uh, the same height, which would be sort of a perpendicular from B or from C going kind of perpendicular, maybe going over here. They both have the same base because CB and B lowercase c are the same length. So these two things have the same area. So if this thing, and the area is related to how much time it takes to travel. So if the planet was not pulled in when it hit point B, um, from B to C, uh, and C to B was the same distance as from B to lowercase c, then those two triangles would have the same area and they would cover the same amount of time in the same area. But look what happens after the pull. Because of the pull, the planet does not go from B to C, lowercase c, but from B to capital C. Now the reason these two things have the same area is because they have the same base, literally SB is the base, but they also have the same height because um, lowercase b is parallel to DC and parallel lines are sort of equidistant in that way, so um, the, the, these, the, these triangles have the same base and also the same height. And that, that, that's a nice little proof of that equal distances happen in equal, t equal time for equal, uh, equal time gives equal area, sorry. And um, as, these tri as, as the sun pulses faster and faster, it makes, starts making a polygon. Or if, the, if the sun pulses slow, it makes a polygon. It looks something like this. And you can kind of see why that pull makes it so the planet sort of circles, or in this case, or goes around in, in an ellipse. But as those pulses get quicker and quicker, the, um, it becomes more like, not a polygon, but a curvy thing. Um, real video, will have, there's a video that goes with this. And finally, Newton proves in something called the Principia, in a revolutionary book, uh, he proves sort of the fundamental rule of the universe, with the, what's called the inverse square law. And in a very famous geometric proof, he shows that if planets go around the sun in an ellipse with the sun at one fo foci, the, uh, that would happen if the force of attraction was the inverse of the square of the distance. And this is actually the diagram that goes with it. And I actually made a series of videos about 80 minutes long where I take you through if you're intrigued by this uh, proof. By, by this diagram, you can go through the, the proof uh, of how he, he manages to, to do this. Well, that's the presentation. This is just April 1st. Presentation is two weeks away. It'll be much better by then, so hope you liked it.